Okay, we're going to take a look at the process of using a gate. Um, we're going to use a gate on a tom track, which is often a, a common um, track to use uh, gating on when we're trying to remove or reduce any uh, bleed that's happening uh, on that tom track in between the tom pits itself. So I have a, uh, a drum track here and have already gone in and actually looped a portion of the song where I have a tom pit. So we solo the tom. You can hear a lot of hi-hat bleed, a lot of snare drum bleed, and then you have the tom hit there at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and apply a gate. I'm going to go to the dynamics category and choose the Dyn3 expander gate. So on this gate, the idea is that any sounds that are below the threshold are going to be removed or gated and dropped out to an, uh, practically an inaudible volume. And then once the audio gets above that threshold, the gate will open and you'll be able to hear it. So the first thing we want to do is, is set up this gate to be what they call a hard gate rather than an expander. So to do that, it's all about the ratio knob. When the ratio is set um, at a lower level, like at three to one here, as the sound gets closer to the threshold, the gate will open, but ultimately that sound will be softer, so it expands the dynamics. Um, we want this to be a, a hard gate, so we're going to turn this ratio all the way up as high as it can go, like 100 to 1. Then the range is how low the gate will drop out the audio when the audio is below the threshold. Well, we want it to drop it out so low that we can't hear it, so that's all the way down at 80 dB. So to get started with a gate, you'll to do a hard gating, you turn the ratio all the way up and the range all the way down. Then the next thing we do is we go to the attack setting. We want this gate to open instantly when it sees signal above the threshold. So we need to have as fast of an attack as we possibly can. So we're going to turn that all the way down. We're going to save the hold and release here for a second. So what we're going to do is play back the audio. Now if I turn the threshold all the way up and hit play, you hear absolutely nothing because the audio is not getting high enough above uh, to open up, or it's not above the threshold to open up the gate. But as I turn this threshold down, you'll start hearing sounds come in. If I turn it down too low, you're hearing things trigger the gate um, that we don't want to, like the snare drum bleed, the hi-hat bleed starts to trigger the gate on and off, and you can hear it kind of be choppy. So I want to turn that threshold back up, so the only thing that's opening up the gate is that tom hit. All right, so now the tom is the only thing opening that. Now, it's again, it's a very short sound. So what we need to do is adjust the hold and the release. Ultimately, once the gate opens, the hold and release will determine how long it takes for it to close. So the hold is how long it sustains open, and then the release is kind of the tail or the drop-off of the gate as, as it slowly releases um, and closes the gate. So let's make the hold a little longer. Here it drops right off when the, after the hold, so that the release will smooth out that tail. There we go. That's a pretty good sound. Maybe the hold will be a little shorter. So here's before. And here's after. Yeah, very effective. So we only get that tom sound. Now, if you're having problems with the gate triggering from other sounds, like maybe the gate keeps triggering off that hi-hat bleed or the snare bleed, and you, you just can't find the threshold setting that um, only allows for the tom to open to the gate, then you can employ this section right here, which is called a side chain filter. So if we want to, we can EQ the sound that the gate listens to. So we're not actually EQing the actual tom sound, just what the gate is listening for. So if we turn on this speaker icon, we'll get to hear the whole track again, all the bleed and everything. But then what we can do is turn a filter, a low filter on, and filter out everything below a certain frequency. And so you'll hear this sound kind of filter out the low end. So any kick drum bleed gets filtered out. And also, we could filter out any high end, so maybe that hi-hat bleed.
so this sound that we're hearing right now is the sound that the gate is listening to. So we're removing some of that hi-hat bleed and we're remo removing some of the kick drum bleed. So that way the gate won't trigger from that, um, that bleed of those instruments. So you're going to have a better accurate time at adjusting the threshold. There it is. There's that tom. So, you know, this one wasn't tricky to begin with, but there's certainly plenty of times where um, the hi-hat bleed is so loud in the snare drum track or the tom track that you have to filter the sound a little bit so that way the gate doesn't trigger off of those, those, other, um, uh, those other bleeding sounds in the track. So, of course, this gating can be applied to any of the tom tracks. It can be applied to your snare drum, to your kick drum. It could be applied to an electric guitar. Maybe you got an electric guitar that every time he stops playing, you get this massive amount of noise. So you could gate it so that way the gate is open when he's playing and then slowly shuts and filters out all of that um, guitar amp noise when he's not playing. So it's a, a certainly a useful tool um, to, to help us clean up our audio tracks.